الطي ويسير لي أمري وحل الأقد تم اللسان يفقه قولي بحق حبيبنا وسيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أن رب المستأمسي أجي إسماء داوي أن رب العلماء my dear and respected chairman of the Mazar Society, Azarat Mahmoud Limbada, and all our respectable members of the society, <coughs> my dear elders, mothers, fathers, and brothers and sisters, I greet you with the universal greetings of peace, love, and mercy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Lord, the Creator, the Nourisher and the Sustainer of the Universe. And we beseech Almighty Allah to shower His eternal salam and blessings on our illustrious Master, Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, His beloved family, His Sahaba and all our great awliya, as salihin Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen. Many people feel that we have come out here in honor of the awliya and in honor of the saint that is buried here, as Sayyid Abdurrahman Matura Rahmatullah Alayhi. But that is actually the reverse. Allah has honored us to come here because they are really the beloved of Allah. They are the honored and the beloved friends of Allah of whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam one day said that on the day of judgment there will be a group of people who will be seated on a manabir in minur Allah they will be seated on mimbars and thrones of nur and celestial light they will not be prophets they will not be sahaba they will be a special class of people and the Sahaba asked, who are these people? Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited the ayah in Surah Yunus, where Allah says, Allah inna awliya Allah, la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. They are the friends of Allah, on whom there will never ever be any fear whatsoever in this dunya, in the barzakh, nor in the akhirah. Wallahum yahzanun, and they will have no grief whatsoever. This morning as we set out to come towards Robin Island, we witness the Jamal of Allah. Jamal of Allah means the beauty of Allah. We saw and witnessed a spectacular sunrise. We saw the mighty ocean in his calm state. We saw the beauty of Allah, but from the Jamal of Allah, we came to the Jalal of Allah. The Jalal of Allah is the glory of Allah, the powerfulness of Allah. And this is what is imbued in the awliya of whom Allah say, when I make a certain person my friend, I become his eyes through which he sees. I become his ears through which he hears. I become his hands through which he holds. I become his feet with which he walks. We must not misunderstand this, that this wali has become Allah. Never ever, nothing can contain Allah. But Allah teaches us in this hadith Qudsi that Allah empower and Allah overwhelm and Allah holds His awliya and Allah is the one who put love and respect in the hearts of people for His awliya. I want to take this golden opportunity to wish every member of our Mazar Society and all those founders and members who have passed on, may Allah grant them the highest of Jannah to And may we all be raised fi zumratil awliya in the company of the awliya on the Day of Judgment. For the 25th of January symbolizes and marks 40th anniversary of the formation of this beautiful movement the Cape Mazar Society. And I want to thank those of our original founder members who are still here. May Allah grant you long life. May Allah bless you for
for the noble initiative that you have undertaken that we can be servants of the Oliya. We can work for the legacy that they have left behind. We are all here because our Oliya brought Islam here. Right around the Western Cape, there is a beautiful circle of protection as if our forefathers who brought Islam here from Indonesia and Malaysia and later from the subcontinent of India, we can be proud to say, and I'm very proud to say, I am a descendant of Sheikh Yusuf Rahmatullah, of Sheikh Abdurrahman Matura Rahmatullah, of Sheikh Nurul Mubin Rahmatullah. Our forefathers were not only spiritual luminaries, but they were warriors, and therefore the blood of warriors run in our veins, and we must stand firm on the legacy left behind by our great Oliya. The Cape Bazaar Society is spearheading the move to have all the Karamas and the Mazars to be declared national heritage, and rightly so. And we as the broader community, please give your full support to us as the Cape Mazar Society that every single Karama and every single Mazar throughout the country must be recognized as, as national heritage, inshallah, that they can serve as an inspiration for us. In conclusion, I want to remind you that I have personally heard from the mouth of the late Nelson Mandela when he said that while he was imprisoned on this very island in his darkest hours of a prisoner, in his dark hours of anxiety and depression, yes. he would come sit here at the feet of Sheikh Abdurrahman Matura. He will visit this Karama, he will sit at this Darga and he will, it is as if a beautiful electrical spiritual current will come over him as if he re received calm and serenity from Allah through the barakah of this great wali in whose presence we are today. If a non-Muslim could feel the serenity at the Karamas, what is wrong with Muslims? Allah. What is wrong with us that we don't pay our respects and visit the shrines, the dargas and the Karamas of Aulia anymore? We must not wait for annual, annual coming together of the Mazar site here in Robben Island. Take your families, pack your basket Sunday morning, go have your breakfast and your lunch with your families at the Dargah of Sheikh Yusuf in Makassar, at the Dargah of Sheikh Nurul Mubin. This is the Oliya, and they have been so imbued with the Jalal of Allah, Allah. that our history teaches us that Allah has made this wali, Sayyid Abdurrahman Matura, I feel too shy to stand with my back towards the Qabr because he does not deserve me to show my back, but I have to speak to you. Our history teaches us that at times with the Qudr of Allah, he would walk on the water. He would walk on the water to go and meet Sheikh Nurul Mubin in Kamsway. These are the Uliya who are our forefathers. May Allah preserve us, Amen. may Allah protect us, Amen. and as we hear today, may Allah raise us the Zumaratil Uliya in the company, the blessed company Amen. of the great Uliya. Amen. 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 Mashallah for your beautiful words. The timing was excellent. We covered everything. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, we've just got another person who's going to say a few words. Uh, the PRO of the Mazar Society, Yusuf Khan Dawa. He uh, was one of the leading spearmen, the people of uh, getting the heritage site, the process going. So we'll ask him to say a few words. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, as-salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. First and foremost, I would like to say for those who do not know, on the 3rd of December 2021, our first batch 
of Karamat around Cape Town has been declared heritage. It was gazetted on the 3rd of December 2021, so people can watch the media, they can just Google, you'll notice that you'll find the gazette there, alhamdulillah. We are in the process of uh, following through with the next batch, and our aim is to complete the entire circle of Aulia around the Western Cape, inshallah. In particular, Sheikh Abdurrahman Matura here, we did not have to do a, uh, a submission or declaration because Sheikh Matura was declared World Heritage, alhamdulillah. So, the Cape Mazar Society, the, the Mazar is very significant to the formation of the Cape Mazar Society because we started off as a Robin Island, uh, Robin Island Society. And the entire, our, our significance and history is on this Robin Island, alhamdulillah. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody who participated in the public participation in for us to have achieved this. Uh, without you, would, we would not have achieved this, alhamdulillah. So uh, be that, we'd like to also thank the our, our stakeholders, uh, Konita Sami from Vida Memoria and Sara Western Cape South African Heritage Resource Agency, Ben and all the uh, all the uh, officials. Uh, we also like to take the opportunity to thank them as well. And also, we receive a lot of for this specific day and every year that we commemorate this course, we have to engage with the Robin Island Museum, and we have one of our project uh, coordinators that's standing here today, Yolanda. We'd like to say a special thank you to her for engaging with us and making it possible for us to commemorate and celebrate the course of Sayyid Matura Yashukran. Thank you very much. Uh, with that being said, <laughs> we'll continue with the program, inshallah. Shukran. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yusuf Khan Dawai is the PRO of the Cape Mazar Society, doing a lot of good work behind the scenes. Alhamdulillah, may Allah grant him long life to serve the Mazar Society in charge. And now we've got our uh, next speaker, uh, that is Maulana Imran Ziai. Uh, inshallah, we'll, we'll hear from them. Oh, yes, uh, before I call upon the chef, uh, Bonana, they just arrived from Parkpatan yesterday. They attended the rooms of Baba Fariduddin, Shah Rahmatullah Alay, and uh, Data Ganja Bakhsh, Alhamdulillah, Rahmatullah Alay. We are very fortunate that they could manage to come here and grace this function today. الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وكريمنا وشفيعنا وغوصنا وغياسنا ومغيسنا ومعيننا وقطبنا وسراجنا ونذامنا وأشرفنا وراحة قلوبنا نور من نور الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم خالق كل نعابك ومالك كل بنادي يا رسول الله ارے دونوں جہاں آپ کے قبضوں اور اختیار میں یا رسول اللہ ریسپیکٹڈ موسٹ آنرایبل ایلڈرز برادرز ان اسلام مدر سسٹرز انسنٹ یوت السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ان شاء اللہ ائی وش ٹو ٹیک ا میکسیمم اف 7 منٹس اف یور ٹائم ان شاء اللہ الحمدللہ وی ائی ہیر فور دی بلیسڈ عرو شریف of a waliya kamil. Do we really, and alhamdulillah, every person knows who is a wali of Allah and that is the reason we are here. But do we really feel the true message of these awliya? The awliya has given us the true understanding of the deen of Islam. It is these awliya that is, you might think, it is your actions, your wealth, it might be yourself that has granted you what you have. <coughs> Allah is the provider. <laughs> but we know that we are here protected in South Africa, in Cape Town, we are protected because of the karam of Allah through these awliya. In every spot we have a wali of Allah and this is a means of rahmah for us. I don't say this from myself. The verse of the Holy Quran, Surah Yunus, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. 
لهم البشرى في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran and some would translate and give the explanation of this verse لَهُمُ الْبُشْرَى And for them there is glad tidings فِي الدُّنْيَا in the dunya وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ and in the akhirah But it's not just glad tidings for them as His Eminence Hazrat Allama Sheikh Alexandra mentioned It is not just something that we have come here, no Allah has selected us and has chosen us that we can be here today for the Urush Sharif of this world. We must keep in our mind the verses of this. So if you want a Sufi interpretation of this verse, they don't just say, Lahumul Bushra, for them is glad tidings. Although that is also good. But they translate to say, Lahumul Bushra, and they are the glad tidings. Fit dunya of this dunya and the akhirah. Who is the glad tidings of this dunya and the akhirah? Awliya Allah. Not only is he just a wali of Allah. He is Ali Nabi Aulade Ali Shehzada Ghosiyah. He is the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Understand very well that when you come to these type of darbar, you ask from Allah, but you ask it a darbar where du'as are accepted. You ask it a darbar where du'as are accepted. The rahmah of Allah is flowing. Today it is history. Because Alhamdulillah we celebrate 40 years as we mentioned and we heard the Cape Town Mazar Society originally was first it started with the Robben Island Society or uh, togetherness of the people and Alhamdulillah our master of ceremonies was one of the people that was from the inception that was in this program and it started and began and more than that a personality that today we owe all this easiness to and the true spirit of going from Karamat to Karamat, from Karamat to Karamat in Cape Town. Subhanallah. Hazrat Allama Shah Abdul Latif Raut Al Ansari Rahmatullah. A great personality who had tried very difficult at every moment to keep the love of Oliya. To keep the love of Oliya. And Alhamdulillah, this all is a means of Isali Tawab. For we know the hadith of the Rabbi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whosoever does good and from that good someone else benefits and the good continues, then he gets his tawa and Allah is not short in giving reward. If he had to get ten, if for every verse of the Quran, every letter you get ten tawa. Alif, lam, mim is not one. It's alif, lam, mim. Thirty tawa just to say that. But that person who brought us he get that thawab and he get everybody thawab. This is the barakah of this. So Alhamdulillah, it is through the karam of these awliya, not only by us coming here and doing and assisting, helping the Mazar society, continuing to build this tie and allow our offspring to understand that the true heritage is the heritage of the awliya. The true feeling is the feeling of the awliya. And this is important for me and you to do. It is important in conclusion, the hadith of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, when we speak about the awliya Allah, people think sometimes it's just fairy tales. You know, this Hazrat A walked on the water. This Hazrat did... It's not fairy tales. Let us look at the Holy Quran, because that is that book, La Raiba Fi. There is no doubt in the Quran. You can't doubt it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa salam. He asks and he says, Listen, I, Bilqis is coming and I want my throne. My throne is very far away. I want it to be here before she comes. Who can bring it for me? <laughs> and we know Sulaiman alayhi salam, he had control of jinn. You know, if any one of us and if the Hazrats and the Bawas, they had control of jinn, subhanallah, they may be owning the biggest bank. But it is Sulaiman alayhi salam, he owned. Owned in the sense that he had control. Allah gave him the power. And he was able to have anything he wanted. But in the control of this jinnat, Sayyidina Sulaiman asked them, one said, before the majlis is over, I will bring it. Now if for me and you, if someone says for now, we say we need a sound system, and within a few minutes someone says you can bring it, mashallah, that is already a wali. But Sulaiman he said, no, no, that is too long. 
They tried one by one, one by one. If you look Tafsir Jalal al-Din or Tafsir Imam Suyuti, Rahmatullah Ali, they tried, but they couldn't manage. One person, Asif, radiallahu ta'ala, a wali in the time of Sulaiman Ali salam. He said, before you blink your eye, meaning open and close, I will already have your throne here. Thousands of miles, so many, so many meters, but it will be here. And this is the power of the Ummati, of the awliya of Sulaiman alayhi salam. Then we are the best of Ummah. We are the best of Ummah. For us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Abu Bakr, Umar, Usman and Ali. For us, Allah has given us Sahaba and Uliya. Allah has given us Sahaba and Ahlul Bayt. Allah has given us that, that wherever we look, be it in Baghdad, Huzur, Ghosi, Azam, or Khwaja. So why we love this Uliya? We don't love them just because we say, okay, I love you. I love them and I'm sure we all love them for our selfish need. Now what is our selfish need? Our selfish need is hum badkar hai, dube huwe, zillat mein hai. We are nobody. But Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned, qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anta ma'a man ahbabta fi yawm al-qiyama wa kama qala alayhi salatu al-taslim. You will be with the one whom you love for the pleasure of Allah on the day of qiyama. We love Ghazi Azam. We love Muhyin al-Din. We love Sabir Allah al-Din. We love Sayyid Abdul Rahman Matura Shah. Only for Allah's pleasure. We don't know them, but we know, Ya Rabb, they are your servants. Oh Allah, we love them on the day of Mahshar. We want to be resurrected. Allah. Allah. This is the hadith of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We learn from the verses of the Quran in the hadith. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala keep us on Sirat al May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala keep us guided. Let our offspring and ourselves Continue to receive fuyuz and barakah Amen. from the awliya Allah. Nigahe wali mein wo taasir dekhi. Nigahe wali mein wo taasir dekhi. Badalti hazaro ki takdeer dekhi. Kisi ko mil gai dolat, to kisi ko mil gai shohrat. Hame to mil gaya hai. Asatana awliya Allah. Hama alayna illa al-balaq بہت بہت شکریہ مولانا صاحب علماء عمران زیائی وات پاورفل لیکچر الحمدللہ واس پاور پیکٹ ویری سپریچول اپ لفٹنگ سمٹی تو تنک اباؤٹ الحمدللہ بے اللہ گرانٹ یو لانگ لائف انشاءاللہ جی ویت اس فور مینی یئرز تو کم انشاءاللہ Now the keynote speaker that has been actually flown in to Cape Town to be at this function, Maulana Salim Esop from Peter Marisburg. He's our main guest speaker now. And inshallah he will address us for at least 25 to 30 minutes. Maulana has arrived, alhamdulillah, so please give her a good attention and a hearing. I know Maulana Imran Sahib has set a high bar here, so Maulana Sahib, you've got to be the bar there. I just want to take this opportunity again to thank Yolanda who arranged us to be here today. Thank you Yolanda from the Robben Island Committee. Thank you very much for assisting us and please be assistant for the future programs as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give it over to Maulana Salim Esok from Vita Marisburg. نارے تکبیر نارے رسالت سیائی کے فیض الحمدللہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والسلین اما بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا ایو الذین آمنوا اتقوا اللہ وکنوا مع الصادقین صدق اللہ وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في أمة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم 
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا رسول الله صلاة وسلاما عليك يا حبيب الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين All praises and glorification unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the protector, provider, maintainer, sustainer, cherisher and nourisher of the entire universe Abundance and choices of blessings and salutation be upon our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the cream of creation, the means of our inspiration in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has selected his name in the declaration of faith in the prayer itself and the call of prayer also. Respected ulama kiram, hafaz kiram, all protocols observed, once again, it is a humble uh, effort from my side to be present at a place where I always say in the court of the king, the king is king. And firstly, uh, as it has been mentioned that the purpose of our presence here, I have prepared a speech, but it's uh, an hour long, which I have written. <laughs> But I'm not going to take an hour, I'm going to just try and keep within the time frame that I've given. Very quickly, coming in today, firstly we need to understand we, had a we have a beautiful day. And naturally, a beautiful day has an effect on a person's personality, on a person himself. Also, what we need to understand that this beauty that we see here today and the day that we have here today is only because of the karam of this great personality that we are here for and literally I will say literally this is breathtaking for me it is my first time in Cape Town and I always wanted to come to Cape Town but with one intention and that is to visit the karamat as the Cape Townian will say we say mazar they say karamat so we had I had this intention to visit the Karamat and I was asked this question at, at the Sheikh in Sufi Bhaijan, the, the Mazar is Sufi Bhaijan, and one of his great grandson asked me the question, Malana, have you been to, to, the, to, to Cape Town? I said, no, I haven't been to Cape Town, but I would like to go there because I would want to go and visit the Mazar. And he said, inshallah, you're sitting here, it will happen. Oh, and well, Allah, Allah, after two, three weeks, I received a call that are you available to go to Cape Town? I wow. said, what? He says, no, you're going to go to Cape Town because there is someone that needs you to deliver a short form. So I'm thinking to myself, this is in a spiritual realm that Ghulam Hafiz Sufi, Rahmanullah Ahsan. Allahu Akbar. This is the Karamah. I don't think so you wanted to disappoint Allah. Allah. Anyway, we could still manage without the people allowed both. Okay. So as I was saying, that in the spiritual realm, this connection was made and it was made so that you're gonna go to Cape Town, but with a maqsa. And the maqsad is that you have to go there and this is what you have to do. You have to deliver this talk. Alhamdulillah. So I'm just going to go through my speech very quickly. Sheikh Abdul Rahman Matura, Rahimahumullah. Now I want you to try to prepare a picture. I'm sorry, I'm to, I want to take you back and want you to understand this picture and have this in your mind. What was the situation when he was dropped here on the island? What was the situation? Firstly, you need to understand that they were shackled and brought here and left here on this island. And what we also need to understand that when he was caught and when he was put in a prison, and I'm sure this had happened, 
that in Batavia, this is where he was caught. And then they did not keep him there for a day or two, maybe more. And he didn't go home. He didn't visit his family members as how he was dressed. That's how he was brought to this country. And at the same time, what we need to understand, the distance that is from Batavia to here, you're looking around 7,306 nautical miles. It's about 14,456 kilometers. That would take about two months if a ship is moving at a speed of 11 to 9, 9 to 11 uh, knots. 9 to 11 knots would take about two months. So in the two months, what did he eat? In the two months, the Dutch did not care about him. They were not going to prepare halal food and give him kosher right. food and say, give him anything halal to eat. What did they do? What did he do? The only thing that comes to my mind that this was complete and the highest form of reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of the things that he had done, he had done because these are the, these are the qualities of the awliya ikram. These are the qualities of the Ahlul Bayt. And when we look again, what is the quality? The quality of the awliya ikram is following the Quran. And Qatadata radiyallahu ta'ala an Jaa ila ummi Ummi al-mu'mineen He comes to her Ummi al-mu'mineen Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiyallahu ta'ala an Ha Faqal And he asked a question And he says Ya Ummi al-mu'mineen Haddithini That inform me An khulki rasulillah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Faqal Tell me about the khulf of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to call and she said Allah to Qur'a Qur'an Qur'an then haven't you recited the Holy Qur'an? Qul to Bala I did indeed I did to call it she then said fa inna qulki rasulillah al-Qur'an so what we need to understand that he alayhi rahmah has come from the Ahlul Bayt and indeed whatever he had done was in accordance to Qur'an so while being on the ship for about plus minus two months, now you need to understand, what did he eat? So, in that interim, when, when you become, when you devote yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then indeed Allah feeds you. Allah gives you things. Allah protects you. Allah safeguards you. And this is what we need to understand. That the level of of, of reliance that he had on Allah and this is should be a lesson because we are seated here not just to talk about this great personality but we need to also become applicant we need to apply their, their, their lifestyle apply what they had done and try to live the way they had lived try to behave the way that they have be behaved and this is going to draw us closer to Allah because we need to understand one thing a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his only one motive is what? His motive is to taqarrab ila Allah, is to draw you closer to Allah. Not taqarrab ila 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 not to draw, you draw you closer to himself. But if someone has to come and he draws you to yourself and towards his pocket, then he is a fake. But the awliya ikram, they draw you and they push you towards Allah. They're always behind you. They're always there to push you in the direction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, again, going back again to the life when he was brought down in Robini land, as we would say in Afrikaans. I can say my Afrikaans partly, but we are Afrikaans. I can say my Afrikaans. All right. So imagine now he has dropped here at the island which is called Robini land, which, is, which means the, the island of the seals. And he's, and he's here only with the seals and a few other prisoners. At night it becomes very cold. During the day he is in a scorching heat. It's not that they had a lot of trees here. So we need to understand that how did he spend his time, Allahu Akbar? What did he do? The only thing that he had done was to draw, try and draw people towards Allah. What did he do? We need to understand this. 
that because of his action, because of his reliance, the people that were around him understood that this man, Hazar Rajul, this man is not an ordinary Rajul. He's not an ordinary human being. And therefore, as the Sheikh has said, that Nelson Mandela was come and sit here because they know they could see and they would see things. Therefore, they understood the importance of this great personality. So again, what did he do? I, what I understand that he disseminated, he dissemin disseminated spiritualism. And that is uh, the most important part of our journey, is to spiritually revive ourselves. And to spiritually revive yourself, first, you're, first you need to start with yourself. You know, we cannot, we cannot go out there and try to correct people and try to bring people and put them in the right path when we are also incorrect, when we are doing wrong. And I was saying this the other day to someone. I said, you know, when, when the, the, the people see us, when, when, when the outsiders look at us, when people of different faiths, when they look at us, they are not looking at our salah, they are not looking at your rosa, your zakah, or they're not looking at, my, at the turban that they wear, or this kurta that they wear, or this hat that they wear. No, they're not looking at that, brothers and sisters in Islam. What are they looking at? They're looking at your akhlaq. They're looking at your character. Because this is paraphernalia. This is para this long beard or this beard I have is just a show. It will only become applicable. It will only become worth worthwhile. And it only become valuable if we try and correct ourselves. If we try to become Muslim of application. And not Muslim of just putting down rules, but we're not we're not applying it ourselves. Because Deen al Deen al Islam is a practical religion. And you know, I always question this. Ham namaz panch bhag padte hai. Tahajjud namaz ham padte hai. 